My mother grew up in Liberia when she was about 12 years old. A civil war broke out, and her tribe was being hunted down. They would come in the middle of the night, and they would light the houses on fire. Once you wake up, you would flee out the front door, and that's where a bunch of rebel soldiers would be with automatic rifles, and they would just kill everybody that would come out of the house. Everyone was screaming, everyone was running around. She noticed that they torched her father's house. She couldn't even go see if he was right because you had to leave or you would have been dead. She never saw her father again. After my father get killed, like, I keep dreaming about him over and over and over. So I said, if I have a son, I would name him Kudi. I named him after my father. The name Kwiti means civilization. There was a period of time in Liberia where people from the countryside would give their kids to the people of the city. They would go into civilization, get educated, and they would come back to the countryside and uplift the people. I hold that name with great honor because I'm going to become something one day, and I'll be able to go back to my family. I'll go back to my countryside and uplift my people. We immigrated to Providence, Rhode Island, Lockwood Projects. The environment's not the best to raise children. You know, we had gangs, people were shooting. Don't get me wrong, it was better than Africa, but it was tough, man. It was on welfare. We didn't have no money. I was not educated, so I you know, couldn't read and write. I had to get the boys to school, go to school myself. There was a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work. Playing football was an escape, a place where we know it was safe and you can just have fun. As he getting older, he started having more interest. He got to know this NFL player they call Will Blackman. He was the only person that I had made out of Rhode Island and our generation to go play pro football. We started talking and he was just like, keep working at your craft and one day like you'll be able to take care of your family. And that's what influenced me to go to Hendrickin because he went there. Hendrickin is one of the top Catholic schools in the Northeast. It was a difficult decision for my family because we can't afford Bishop Hendrickin. The school tuition was like 10000 I'm making $14 an hour. I got rent to pay. I got all the kids. I was asking a lot of her, so I begged her. I got on my knees like, Mom, please. He said, Mommy, I promise you, if, if I go over there, I will try my best. They say once you go over there, you get good grade, you do good, you will get a scholarship. 12 years old, I said, Mom, if you send me to the Hendrickin, I'll go to college for free. I promised her a scholarship. He came here, he was in all top classes, honors accelerated, phenomenal GPA. We talked about his goals, and as a ninth grader, no one has goals. Like, you're just trying to do whatever's fun, you know? And he says, coach, I'm going to get out of here. And that drove him every day. Every day he came to this building, you knew that he was going to fulfill that promise to her. Freshman year, I saw a, you know, a kid sitting in our end zone watching the end of practice. My father came up to me and said, you know, after practice, go and say hi to this kid. This is, this is, this is the kid, Quiddy Pay, who's a freshman and is supposed to be a pretty good football player. And you could see it in his face that not only did he take it serious more than the other kids, but to actually put him there in that end zone and kind of looking at the varsity and looking up to what maybe what could become the next few years, you could tell there was a little something different with him. Growing up, I used to pray to God and just ask him, help me and take my family out of this struggle. And then I started to realize that nobody's gonna save you. So my prayers quickly changed from that to God just watch over me and I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna be that dog. And you guys are gonna have to have, to have that mentality growing up because we live in a doggy dog world where nothing's given to you. Everything that you want, you have to go take it.
Gatorade Player of the Year, Lineman of the Year, State Championship four times, Super Bowl MVP, Under Armour All American. That was stacked up. One of the coaches on staff at Michigan said, Coach Haba would like to talk to you. We really love Quiddy, we love what we see on film, and we're going to extend out a scholarship to him. The one person I would like to, to um, recognize them, um, my mom. I was a little nervous, my voice was shaking, because there was a lot of people in the stands, my mom was there. She came to this country not knowing what she was getting into, with two young boys. Um, she's done everything for me. She, she sent me to the school. She works three jobs. I never see her face sometimes. She has to support five boys, and, and I know that's hard, but she never complains. That was the first time that anybody had heard our story about how we were struggling and how my mom was working two, two, three jobs. Over four years, she never could come to a football game, all because she was working this whole time. And I do this all for her, so one day, she'll never have to lift her finger again. As I said those words, they were just like, man, like I had no clue. When I went back to my seat, everyone in the auditorium stood up and they were just clapping. They clapped for about like five minutes, just standing there and clapping. I remember seeing my mom, she was crying. It was wonderful. I gave you a big hug. Said you did it, you stick up to your promise. Don't stop there, keep going. Keep going. I remember he told me on the phone, like, big bro, watch. As soon as I get on that field, nobody's safe. Quiddy Pay leading the way for Michigan. Run down from behind by Quiddy Pay. Quiddy Pay got him. Sacked again. It's Quiddy Pay. All he has is a 397 GPA. I guess that's okay. They said he's had one feet, one in the flight. We're in business class. And Adam Shibley is on his computer doing something before class, and I said, what's that? I told him Tufts, a nonprofit that aims to donate uniforms and equipment to underserved youth athletes. And right away, he was like, how can I get involved? Spun around by Quiddy Pay, who's starting to impose himself now. Good, my that boy. Way. It's good, boy. Yeah. How's life, bro? It's good right now. All Rest right. Me. Yes, sir. Doing this foundation and being able to fund uniforms to these kids, you create a bond with them. You don't want to look down the line and be like, oh, man, I wish I would have worked harder than this, or I wish I would have took care of that class. You want to do it all now. He's going to do things like that. He's going to mentor. And, you know, He's going to give back to kids and families who he sees his story and that are important to him, and, and that, that's really awesome. Never lose focus of what your goal was. My goal was to take care of my mom. That was my why, and that kind of just made me work to be who I am today. I wanted to wake up in the middle of the day and not have a worry in the world. I wanted to take my brothers to school and take them to practice and go to all their games, give my brothers the best education that they can get. Everything that everyone has sacrificed for in his family is coming to this phenomenal moment. He said, Mommy, I'm going to cry. I said, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to dance. I'm going to be so happy. It's kind of like the African culture where it comes full circle. I think my grandfather, who I'm named after, will be very proud of the man I've become. For me to be able to become something and go back and help my community, I feel like he'd be very proud of that. <laughs>